well, it's natural, so it must be good, right? I mean, that makes sense. If the icon is stop making videos about sustainability, mm. hi guys, welcome or welcome back. Today's video will be less lifestyle and more educational because I will be talking about cotton and its environmental impact. When I first started out with this sustainable journey, I had no idea. I couldn't distinguish between different fabrics and I didn't know which ones were eco-friendly. But since then, I've done a lot of research and I thought it would be nice to share some of the things that I've learned with you. The idea is that if you guys like this, then I can turn this into a series. So let me know in the comments which fabric I should discuss next. But first, let's talk about cotton. And trust me, there is a lot to say. Cotton is a very light and breathable fabric that feels very soft. It can be found in most of our closets because it's in basic pieces like t-shirts and jeans. But where does cotton come from? The cotton plant is grown in warm areas in Asia and America. Cotton is a natural fiber, so it must be good for the environment, right? Unfortunately, it's not that simple. I will talk about the bad stuff first, but make sure you watch until the end of the video because that's where I'll be sharing some more positive news. As you may know, the cotton plant is a very thirsty one. According to the World Wildlife Fund, it can take 2,700 liters of water to grow enough cotton to produce one cotton t-shirt. That's a lot. That's enough water for one person to drink for 900 days. <sighs> wow. And did you know that it's estimated that about 60% of irrigation water in Central and Southern Asia is lost even before reaching the fields just because of poor infrastructure? Cotton is grown in monoculture, meaning that large portions of land are being used for this one plant only. Ideally, you would rotate between different crops on the same field. Because different crops need different nutrients, rotating them brings some relief to the soil. So how do cotton farmers replenish the needed nutrients in the soil? Ah, oh, that's right, chemical fertilizers. Another problem with these gigantic cotton fields is that they're like an all-year-round open buffet for those insects who just love that cotton flavor. So to protect their crops, cotton farmers have to use a lot of pesticides. But these chemicals eliminate other species that aren't even the target as well. And because they end up in the groundwater, they're even poisoning the farmers and their families. Now that we know what goes on on the fields, let's have a look at the factories where the cotton fluff is turned into the clothes that you and I have in our closet. The cotton fibers are first spun into a thread. The thread is then woven or knit into fabrics, which are bleached and dyed. The aftermath of this chemical party is toxic wastewater that pollutes our rivers and oceans. Finally, the fabric is cut and stitched into garments. Of course, the machines in these factories are powered by electricity. And you can't spell electricity without carbon dioxide, am I right? According to Annie Leonard, the production of one cotton t-shirt generates 5 pounds of carbon dioxide. And then the t-shirt still has to be transported to the other side of the world, sending even more carbon dioxide into our atmosphere. So far, I've only been talking about the environmental impact of cotton, but there is a lot to say about the social impact as well. Many developing countries use old equipment and they don't have strict environmental and health regulations. The conditions on the plantations are often deplorable and the workers in the factories aren't better off. Not only the exposure to chemicals can cause illnesses, but also the cotton dust in the air puts the workers at risk of lung diseases. And we all know about the horrible working conditions and unfair wages in sweatshops where our clothes are being put together. If you don't want to support this unfair system, make sure that you buy fair trade. So enough with the bad news, let's move on to the positive stuff. I want to see some solutions. Maybe genetically modified cotton or GMO cotton is the answer to our problems. Bt cotton is a modified cotton which contains Bt toxins, which make the plant resistant to various pests like the bullworm. 
Sounds good, right? The problem is that GMO cotton is made so it can't reproduce. So the farmers have to buy new expensive seeds every year. As a result, many small-scale farmers have to take on loans with a very high interest rate. It has driven some of them into such despair that suicide seemed the only way out. And by the way, GMO cotton doesn't even completely eliminate the need for pesticides. Okay, so that wasn't that positive, but there is a chemical-free alternative. Organic cotton seems to be the way to go. Crop rotation is key on organic farms, so there's no need for chemical fertilizers. On top of that, farmers use water more efficiently and they count on natural predators to take care of those cotton-loving insects. There is less yield on an organic cotton farm, but the cotton can be sold for a higher price. Now, there is one thing that needs to be said about that. If we want our entire worldwide production of cotton to be organic, we will need a lot more space. Or, you know, we could just consume less. And let's not forget that even organic cotton production is very intensive in use of water and energy. A question you might be asking yourself is, do we really need to keep producing new cotton? Can't we just reuse what we have and recycle old cotton? And the answer is, yes, we can, but maybe not in the extent that you'd wish. Cotton fabric can indeed be turned back into cotton fibers that can be reused to make new textile products. But unfortunately, the quality of the fiber is affected in this process. So the shorter recycled cotton fibers have to be mixed with new fibers to make new fabric. And here's a fun fact. Fabrics that are made out of a mix of fibers are more difficult to recycle. So while recycled cotton does reduce the use of water and energy in the fashion industry and it reduces textile waste, the disadvantage is that cotton cannot be recycled over and over again. So what is the conclusion of this cotton tale? Well, if you're buying new clothes, then definitely go for fair trade, organic and recycled cotton. But even these types of cotton have their impact on our planet. You just can't produce and transport things without using resources and without using energy. Therefore, the most eco-friendly purchase is no purchase at all. So consume less, take care of your clothes, don't wash them too often so that they'll last you a long time and consider buying second hand. Just a friendly neighborhood reminder for you and me. That was it for today. Like the video if you made it until the end. Um, let me know if I should make more videos like this and if you don't want to miss out, then you know what to do. Subscribe. See you next time. Bye. And we all know about the horrible working conditions and unfair wages in fat, in fat shops in sweatshops. So enough with the bad news, I want some positive stuff. I, let's move on.